morning, beautiful people. Welcome back. Um, when I did the May 11th teaching vlog, I thought that was going to be like one and done, but I got such positive feedback on that vlog that I've decided to do another one, and maybe I'll even get a third one in before the end of the school year wraps up. So, also, thanks for the support, guys. I just, I feel like my little itty-bitty part of the internet is sort of suddenly taking off, and I love talking to you guys. I love your feedback. I love your comments, and it just, it means a lot. It really does, because YouTube, you, you don't get paid for this. At least, I'm not getting paid for this. It's a labor of love, but I love to share, and so your, my payment really is your feedback. So, thank you, thank you, thank you. And with that, let's go ahead and get this vlog started. And today, what I'm really doing is, I'm already starting to prepare for next year. So I'm pulling out materials that I need to send to the PRC. Uh, we, I know for next year, our everyday math is going to stay the same. And so I'm going to try to get like the first three chapters of the math sheets that I use sent out because we actually have a pacing guide for everyday math. They're very, they're very intent that we use this program. And I do modify it here and there because some of the lessons, some of the lessons are winners and some of them eh, need a little help. And then I'm also going to get some of my social studies pages sent out. I don't use all of these social studies pages, but I do like the reading skills and strategy ones. And um, the ones are called like, vocabulary and study guides. Because once you fill these in, this then becomes a paper that they take home to study for the test. So I will get, all, I try to run off all the materials I need to make sure that for like September, October, and November, I don't have to make copies of anything. And then this week, I needed to make copies of these because we're doing a cute little idiom book, um, figurative languages. So I needed to get this run off so we could work on our idioms this week because since I teach a high bilingual population, idioms are a real problem. So. And then a couple of videos ago, I showed you how I went through the process of deciding on next year's room decor theme. And as you guys know, if you watch the video, I decided to go with the red, white, and black theme. And the room right now is a little on the messy side because it is getting near the end of the year and I am transitioning. One of my teacher tips to make back to school so much easier is to put up your September bulletin boards now. Seriously, get them up now and then this way they're up all summer and when you walk in in September, bulletin boards, you don't have to do it. It's done. So I'm going to turn the camera here and show you just how awesome the red, white, and black is coming out. I love it. And in fact, let me get a little closer here so you can see how I layered the trim. So I've got the red on top of the red and white polka dot. And there's my palms. I'm loving it. These posters won't stay up. I just put them there so that there would be something on the wall. And then you can also see over here, this one with the red trim, the lanterns. I'm going to get my new alphabet up hopefully one day this week. Uh, another teacher is printing it for me and then I'll get it laminated. And also, the lanterns, I, I don't like how they're coming out, just hanging in one single lantern. So I'm going to bunch them. I need to go back to Hobby Lobby and even buy a couple more of the paper lanterns. And then over here, you can see again, I just, oh, I love how intensive, come on, light up, how just, it's so bold and vivid. And I love how I put a palm on one of those paper fans and that just oh it's so pretty I just I'm loving it so there's more lanterns which again I'm gonna bunch them up like a make a chandelier effect and then here oh isn't that beautiful I'm loving that's my favorite one actually the red palm on the black and white polka dot with the matching word wall signs and then as you can see I have no border on this at all. It, it's in transition. I gotta take all this down. In fact I got some of the words off already and put up new paper. I went at the teacher store that was kind of alarmed. They didn't have any black fadeless paper because I really do love 
those rolls of the fadeless paper. I can get black butcher paper here, but it's not fadeless. And so what ends up happening is, you know, I have a lot of windows in this portable. Halfway through the year, your black paper begins to look brownish because it starts to bleach. So I do need to get paper. I may have to order off Amazon.com, which I kind of don't want to. It's more expensive to do it that way. So anyway, I'm going to pause for now because I need to get some copies made and I'm going to have to pick up the children real soon. So but I hope you enjoy this vlog this week and stick around. One of the things I bought on my last shopping haul for the room decor was new labels. Um, I'm going to show you how they came out. I'm loving the look of these. This is my leveled reading tubs. These are, you know, DRA 20, 24, 28, and it goes all the way to DRA 40s on the bottom. I have my uh, oversized 40s over there. And over here, behind this, I have the 50s and 60s. This is only fourth grade, so I don't have a lot of 50s and 60s um, because honestly, there's only like three kids in my room who can read this level of books. Most of them are over here in this tub. But I just love the way those chalkboard labels came out. And I started swapping them on my math manipulative drawers. Here you can see the old pattern, the rainbow chalkboard, and then here's the new one. I just, I love the look of the new one so much better than the old one. The new one just makes the old one look so plain. And it's funny because I love the, the old ones when I first did it. So, but yeah, so I'm going to change the labels little by little on all of my math bins. Um, and if you have any questions on the math bins, I did a video classroom storage where you can see how I did all of that stuff. So, yeah, that's one thing I wanted to show you. And then also another thing, as you guys know right now, it's all about prepping for the end of the year. So um, I was able to send out my math games. I got tired of having to reprint these every year, so I decided to get some nice thick tag board in Astro Bright colors, and then I sent these off to the PRC. And PRC, by the way, is what in, for my district, the print, Printing Center or Printing Resource Center. So this way I send it out and they laminate it. And then I just have to make like one master copy of my copies. And then I just send out one sheet and the PRC will print everything I send them. So and then here's more math games that I had printed. I love muggins. Oh, muggins is so fun. So this way, come next year, over summer vacation, I will be cutting out all this lamination plus more. I have piles and piles of lamination already at home. And then our new everyday math program arrived too late to really send out to the PRC for this year. I had to use it right away. But now I took those posters and everything down, sent them all out, and I will cut all of these out during the summer and have my posters ready to go. I might even cut those out now because I might hang the first couple posters in the room already. So, but yeah, busy, busy, busy. Everything is about next year now. Even though I still have to teach these darlings, I, you know, something happens to all teachers by the end of May. Our brains shift. They really do. It's like, okay, this year's over. Got to get ready for next year. So, but yeah, it's, it's, it's almost like you're doing two jobs at once. I'm still teaching this class while mentally prepping to teach the next one. I spent my entire weekend this Sunday and Saturday going over the Common Core, trying to make sure, you know, what standards did I really hit this year? What standards did I unintentionally slack off of to make sure that, you know, I don't do that again next year? Um, and unfortunately, because of my extended absence, my class this year is a little bit behind in the pacing guide to where they should be because my sub just didn't know how to cover those subjects. So anyway though, I have knocking children at the door. Gotta go. It's over and right now I am just trying to clean up a little because my students, you know, you tell them to put things away and they for whatever reason just never do. Also, to my fellow teachers who watch my blog, I have a serious question. How do you guys handle 
the pencil sharpening situation. We have a sharpener mounted to the wall and I call it the pencil eater because it will turn a brand new pencil into a one inch nubbin in no time flat. Seriously, it's horrible. It's one of those turning handle ones. It's horrible. And then this is my third electric sharpener of the year and I refuse to buy a fourth. It's dead. Um, I, ha I started the year with a really fancy industrial pencil sharpener that literally you just went zing, 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 sharp, sharp. It was awesome. Well, of course, the first time I was absent, somebody in the room stuck a pencil in backwards because they wanted to see what would happen to the pencil eraser and the metal if they sharpened that instead. So, killed the pencil sharpener. It was dead. I stole the pencil sharpener that was actually in our house and brought that one to work and that one lasted all of a month because it was meant for personal use it wasn't a big heavy duty sharpener meant to be used you know an hour a day and then I've now purchased pencil sharpener number three and it died now I've told the kids you know what I don't care how you sharpen your pencils but you gotta figure it out so what ends up happening now is this I just get pencil shavings all over the floor. My floor is always ruined, always a mess, and if you know me, you know that I am a neat freak and that this is driving me crazy. And this is a good day. This is actually a good day. There was one day last week, I want to say it was like Thursday, I was actually embarrassed for the custodian to come in and clean the carpeting. So yeah, if you have any suggestions for dealing with pencil sharpening throughout the day, because I've done the buckets where you have the bucket for sharp pencils and then the bucket that's to put in the unsharpened pencils. Well, what ends up happening is the 50 sharpened pencils in the bucket that's ready to go is gone in a day or two. And so then I'm stuck resharpening all these pencils and nobody ever gives me back the broken pencils, so that didn't work. I've tried where I'm the only one who sharpens them all day, which basically translates into I spend my entire day sharpening pencils. Um, I've tried it where you know I make sure that they have like three sharpened pencils in their desk, but I have you know I have the special ed room this year. I have some high maintenance children, and three sharpened pencils for some of my students lasts five minutes max. I've tried giving them a crayon to write with. It's like, you are not getting another pencil today. I am done. I've sharpened your pencil 20 times. Here is a crayon. All that does is make the child shut down and refuse to do any more work for you. So yes, please, if you have suggestions on how to deal with sharpening pencils, I welcome them all. I really do. I am on top of a lot of things, but this pencil situation, it's driving me crazy. And this is something I've been struggling with for a couple of years now, just keeping the kids with sharpened pencils. Oh, and before you suggest mechanical pencils, tried those, bought a set for the whole class. Basically, by the end of the day, I had like 10 of them that had been dismantled. The kids literally just took them into pieces. And then what the kids would do is pop the eraser off, dump the leads out, play with them, and then end up breaking the leads and trying to shove them back in there. Mechanical pencils was a complete failure. So I'm this close to just saying no more pencils, ink pens, just here's a pen. But then I already know I have a couple of kids in here that if they can't change something, they just won't go any farther. They shut down. I, I just, <laughs> it's crazy. Send me suggestions because I need help on pencils. Of all things, I need help on pencils. So anyway though, I'm about to go home and it's actually been a really productive day today. We got a ton of stuff done. I'm really happy with how the day turned out and um, it was good. It was really, really good. So unfortunately though, I was not able get, to get my copies sent out to the PRC because the, the teacher nightmare, the Xerox machine is down. <laughs>
<laughs> so hopefully the Xerox machine will be fixed tomorrow and I can get my stuff sent to the PRC for next year to get those ready. And with that, I will talk to you more next time. Morning, happy Tuesday. Today I am going to do a little bit more vlogging today and I am still trying to make my copies. So I am collecting things that I need to get off to my print center and then I want to share with you something I got off TeachersPayTeachers.com last night. I was scouring Teachers Pay Teachers last night because I was looking for something really cute to make for the end of the year and yet not be too childish because you know, these are fourth graders and while they do like to cut and glue they don't want to make something that's babyish so I found the most wonderful product for the end of the year this right here end of the year memory lap book or memory book lap book and it's by okay my eyes are killing me Mrs. D's Corner and so it's an interactive book that you use you basically need one manila folder and then you're going to fold it hot dog style and these are like interactive pieces and flip pieces and this is all going to open up and then they layer I thought this was absolutely darling and here's what the cover of it looks like and then it opens up to the middle and then this is the back page it's like the little memory book and there's a place for autographs so and this was I think it was only like four dollars and fifty cents so I cannot wait and it goes from K through K through eight so if you wanted this to teach other grade levels um, I'm going places and again you layer this here make flaps so oh I thought this was perfect there's lots of cutting gluing coloring although I'm gonna run some of this off on Astrobrites and it's a really good activity because it'll take us a couple of days to do this but they'll be using their thinking skills and their writing skills but it'll also do a really good job of keeping them busy because let's be honest you know those last two days of school do you still want them using their brains of course are we really just looking to keep them busy because we have a million things to do absolutely <laughs> so I thought this was perfect and now let's zoom in here so if you want to go to teachers pay teachers and find this end of the year memory book so that was the big thing I scored last night and if you're wondering what's the deal with the glasses I am rocking a lovely eye infection today had to throw away my tart mascara pitch that in the trash had to throw away my favorite eyeliner and I actually had this infection last week I was using medicated drops I thought it went away apparently I stopped using the medicine too soon because it came right back and I've got my glasses I don't really wear my glasses a lot because I really wear my glasses for um night driving I'm what they call night blind and so just to see the lines on the road I wear them but I put put them on today to act more like a a guard so I'm not touching my eyes unconsciously all day long so this is so I won't you know spread the infection and because I really don't want to take any more days off of work than I have to because I miss so much for the surgery so but with that I'm gonna pause this right now because I'm gonna go run to the copy machine and see if I can make some copies that I've been trying to make for several days now <laughs> so I had absolutely zero luck trying to make my copies We'll try again later, but I wanted to take a moment and share with you my new pensive. Um, I know I said earlier that I wasn't going to even bother making a new one, but I ended up cracking and making a new one because I just I couldn't stand it. It was like I, I can't put notes in this thing. It's it's disgusting. So here's my new pensive, and I bought a new binder. I went with the white one this time instead of black. And here is my new cover sheet from the uh, the package, the printable package I bought from shopschoolgirlstyle.com. And it says my reading pensive. And then here's my side label, reading pensive. And when you open it up inside, I have a little zip pouch with stuff in it. And unfortunately, this is not a full pensive because I didn't bother to remake everything. 
Um, but so here's my keeping track for reading and writing. And as you can see, there's very little in here because I, I just started this. I just, you know, it's brand new. And then here I have, I don't want to show names, but I have, you know, DRA2 scores in here, the latest ones. I just finished testing every one, again, for DRA2 to get, like, end of the year scores. And then for every person, they have their own sheet with a labeled tab with their names on it. And I go through... And I just, you know, I make anecdotal notes in here, keep track of things. Like this child got bumped up, her score went higher when I sat down and wrote with her, so I bumped her up. And so, yeah, it's just, it's just a way for me to keep track of everyone. And then I'll have usually one sheet in here is for the reading conference, one is for writing conferences. Um, usually by this time of year, this thing would be all filled up, but because I made fresh, it's not. But... Yeah, so that's that's my because I had several questions. You know, what is a pensive? How do you organize it, set it up? And so basically, one tab per child, reading and writing, a sheet for each kid. And this is the standard sheet that comes right off the um, uh, cafe menu CD disc that comes with the the program. So I just pop the CD in and print these off. And then I like to run them on separate colors. So this way, I, easier for me to keep track. And I don't have in here right now is other test scores because usually right here would be a printout of my NWEA scores. In here would be their WIDA scores. Um, so right now it's pretty bare bones just because it's brand new from being destroyed. And so, but yeah, that is my pensive. And uh, the pensive, pensive is a word that actually came from Harry Potter. And it's what Dumbledore kept his thoughts in. And so the Daily Five sisters, they just sort of adopted the word to use for their reading program. It was a suggestion from one of their students, actually. So, And then this is just a little sticky note that I found, a cute little Apple sticky note to add a little Papa Red in there. And so I'm very happy with how that turned out. So that's it for now. Tuesday's finally come to a close. Um, I'm actually in my classroom pretty late. It's 5 after 5, and usually I leave like a few minutes after the students do because I get in my classroom an hour and like 10 minutes before school starts, but tomorrow I'm not going to be here. I have a substitute coming in, and so I know I said earlier this morning that I didn't want to take any more days off than necessary, which is why I came to work today with pink eye or this eye infection or whatever it is. Um, and the glasses helped. I definitely kept my hands off my eyes. But tomorrow I have three doctor's appointments. I thought, okay, I've got to see these doctors. Let's get them all scheduled for one day. So I'm literally going from one doctor to the next doctor to the next doctor. But at least I'm only going to miss one day of work because two of the doctors are not open past like 3 p.m. And they're far away from where I work. So there's like no way I could get there after work. So I'm going to show you my desk, though, because I've had several of you say, you know, how does the desk look when you are leaving it for a sub? And since this is a planned absence, I've had time to get everything neat and perfect. I'm going to turn the camera around. And here you will see my lesson plan. Let's see if I can get this to focus a little better. All right, and let me zoom in here. So you will see, I showed this in a previous video, my sub plan video. So here's like the specials, uh, the first breakfast, math is first, social studies, English. And then when you turn the page here, it talks about lunch procedures, my daily five block, my read aloud time, end of day preparations, and dismissal. And it's all neat and tidy, and I love this form that I made because I only have to make changes on three parts. The rest of the day, the sub stays exactly the same, and this I, I love this form. In fact, I've got a, couple, got a couple other teachers actually using a form similar to this now. And when you open up in here, um, substitute teachers, I find, cannot teach everyday math. The, the book just confuses the heck out of them. So I have got this from a Teachers Pay Teachers. It's a math that meets the common core. So I went ahead and ran off a couple of sheets here and a lot of this is review past lessons that we've already done but it will be very very good review 
it's on the standards so even though it's sub work even though it's ditto sheets it meets the common core and it's good ditto sheets you know, ditto sheets are not evil as long as they're worthwhile at least that's my opinion and then for grammar I just have some pages for abbreviations because we are working on learning our abbreviations as titles and when to capitalize and when not to capitalize and for social studies we are doing excuse me sorry about that could do that one-handed I'm leaving out these this is the Michigan Studies Weekly, and we are currently reading all about the Midwest and the Great Lakes, and so this is perfect. It goes along with exactly what we're doing in social studies. We'll learn more about the Midwest re region, and when you open up inside, they will be reading about the people of the Midwest and the Civil War, Michigan in the Civil War, Michigan industry, and then there is a work part on the back of the page. So this is a very good social studies lesson. And I find subs like these because it's kind of very, it's kind of like a scholastic newspaper. So they're pretty easy to use. They're not too complicated. So that works well. I am leaving for my daily five read aloud tomorrow. Tiki Tiki Tembo. Um, this is a really cute book and it's a little longer. I like to leave a sub a longer read aloud just because it eats up into that afternoon. And then this is the read aloud for the end of the day. We are currently working through Judy Bloom's uh, Double Fudge, or no, Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing, I'm sorry. And then I like to leave an extra assignment. This is not in the lesson plan, but it's literally just, you know, if, if they plow through all these materials, and here is extra if needed. I've left out the attendance. I've left out a lunch count menu and I'm leaving a few referrals to the office. These are the ones that if a child is sick uh, they can send the child to the office if there's an illness and then those are behavior referrals because I do have a couple of kids who unfortunately don't do very well when I'm not here. So that's everything that the sub should need. I've got tape and staples. I have a few ink pens for the sub here, post-it notes, and if I turn this way I am leaving for the sub a bucket of sharpened pencils ready to go and I already know when I come back tomorrow this bucket will be totally empty. It is always completely empty when I come back. Always. And that is everything. Nice and tidy. My lesson plan book is gone. Uh, my basket that has reams of paper in it is hidden on the floor because the sub doesn't need any extra paper tomorrow for any lesson. And I have kids who will just help themselves to the paper basket. And you know, I'm an inner city school teacher. School supplies around here are precious. We there's you know we cannot waste ream after ream of paper. So, I'm sorry, I'll leave my glasses on because I know my eyes are a little scary looking. Um, but with that, that is everything for the day. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this vlog. And I won't be in school tomorrow, so there won't be any vlogging today. So I'm going to go ahead and say goodbye for now on here. And hopefully I will get this posted later tonight. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of me in the future, click that subscribe button. And I'll talk to you later.